G'day guys, how are we going? Welcome to another episode here on the Everyday Explorer when we're putting a Ford JJ1 into an 80 series Land Cruiser. On this episode, we're gonna talk about the how and the why we're gonna be doing this conversion. So sit back, grab something cold and enjoy. G'day guys, how are we going? And today we're gonna to be talking about the how and the why we're gonna be installing a Ford JJ1 into this 80 series Land Cruiser. First things first, I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Aussie 4J Adapters down on the Gold Coast. Michael Widry down there creates some epic bit of machinery and conversion kits like this for 4Js. I've been watching his stuff for years and now it is my turn to be installing something brand new into an 80 series Land Cruiser behind me. Before I get into this kit, firstly, I'm going to talk about the how. So how are we going to bolt all this in and how are we going to make it all work and what exactly Aussie 4J Adapters can do for you. and then we're going to talk about the why because I seem to be getting a lot of questions online about why I'm installing a four-cylinder into an 80 series, which a six-cylinder came out of. So I'll get that into that into just a moment. First, let's get to, into this kit. Now, for all of the DIYers out there that are looking to do engine conversions out there on the market, the number one thing, well, it was for me, was am I gonna, how am I going to bolt this engine up to the chassis, right? Am I going to have to make engine mounts? Uh, I don't have a welder. I've never welded before. All these things really start to put people off from these engine conversions. But Michael from Aussie 4J has built this pretty trick kit which bolts the 4J straight into the 80 with zero welding involved. I'm going to get this thing running with absolutely zero welding and barely any knowledge about engines and wiring and all that sort of thing. So, I'll show you here what he's done. So on each side of the chassis here on the 80 series, there's obviously a mount where it came off of. So this is, goes on one side. So this bolts the standard 4J engine mount onto the top, uh, which then just bolts to the top of the engine, uh, engine on the side there. And then this here bolts to the 80 series chassis, right? There's one on both sides. He's designed this out of about six or eight mil plate steel. So you're never gonna bend this in the history of your life. Uh, and it's easy as that. You bolt them up both sides and the 4J sits on top. Easy as that. To be honest, it just bolts straight in. I'll cut away here to a little um, test run that I did bolting the 4J in so you can see exactly how it sits. And then once you've got the engine bolted in, right, so working back, you're going to have to do a, bolt a few other things in. So, so the next step is to figure out exactly what transmission you're going to be using uh, with the 4J. So this kit is designed to use the standard automatic Isuzu gearbox. So that's the A340E transmission uh, out of a, a D-Max or a RC Colorado with the 4J. Um, they both have this gearbox. So I've got one just down here in front of me that I've um, got from a Wreckers. Um, they have then built it by GNL. So it's built to have an upgraded valve body and a upgraded um, stall converter, torque converter, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're both upgraded in this box. Uh, ready to go out the door with a kit and full wiring harness and everything just in case I did need it. But I shouldn't because I've got a lot of the stuff bolted in the 80 and on the 4J crate motor as well. So I've got a lot of the components there, but it does use the A340 out of the D-Max or the Colorado. All right, so this box does not have an overdrive gear, which is absolutely perfect for what I want to do. I'm going to do a lot of towing with this car and I don't need an overdrive gear. Fourth is going to be absolutely perfect. And then I can change the diff gear ratios later down the track if I absolutely need to change any final speed RPMs on the highway. So um, it's all going to be plug and play and see how we go. Uh, right, so once you've got your transmission, so I've got an A340 transmission automatic. Uh, what gets bolted onto the back of it, right? So I said earlier in this episode that we will be using the Land Cruiser transmission. So it is a full-time four-wheel drive transmission and that gets bolted to the back of the automatic gearbox. Um, this is where Michael's kit really does come into play. He has designed this spacer, which goes on one side, goes on from the Isuzu gearbox, gets bolted into here. And on the other side is the Land Cruiser transfer case. It's that easy. There's about eight bolts in it and you put it together. And then the top four here will bolt to the cross member on the transmission, which bolts it all into the car. That easy, right? Still no welding involved. It is all just putting bolts together. Um, this is a very, very cool bit of kit. Michael, you've done a fantastic job with this. It's all um, engineered and built and to, like it's absolutely bomb proof. This thing is so thick, the steel, and it weighs an absolute ton. 
So that's pretty tough. And then to get the two together, here's another bit of engineering goodness that Michael has um, designed. So on the back here, I'll try and zoom in. On the back here is a, um, a set of splines. So that will go, I can't remember which side it is, whether the transfer or the gearbox, but it slides in here. And then this side will then slide on to the opposite side, right? So it sits in the middle of this here. I think it's called a spud shaft and it gets bolted in all together with the transmission. And then that just swaps the Land Cruiser to Isuzu um, thread pattern. And it just makes it, just makes it all work is honestly that that easy and then that bolts the whole thing together so michael has designed it so the gearbox levers and the low range gear stick should all land in the same spot in the 80 series so if you shouldn't have to adjust the console or anything like that it should all just bolt back up however we, i believe we do i haven't got to that far yet in the build so bear with me but you will see this on later episodes so if you're keen like and subscribe down below but you do have to update your shifter and design a little something so it actually shifts this thing. I have a RC Colorado shifter that I'm going to use maybe the linkages out of to see if I can get it to work with the 80 series stick um, just because I want the automatic to look as factory as possible inside the car. Right, what's next? Wiring. Let's talk about some wiring. So I don't have it with me just yet, but Michael is designing a plug and play wiring loom for the 80 series using all of the factory plugs. So everything will just get pushed together uh, with the ECU. He does a ECU with the immobilizer delete and all those sorts of cool things. So he's working on the ECUs at the moment. So you can buy that all together as part of the kit. So later on, a few episodes time, you'll see me install that. He's on the cusp of finishing it. He's doing his final R&D just to make sure it works. And then I will have it in my beautiful little hands to install into the car behind me. 